Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Today, I wanted to have a frank conversation about United States oil production. Uh, if you look at my tweet uh, that I posted today, there was a lot of conversation about this topic. And the way I basically framed it, I said, look at the blue line, which is what you see in the image here. And I said, if one was to use a framing effect, so framing effect essentially is the way you frame like a statement, you frame your words. And if you present the stuff in a, a bullish connotation, for example, you you bullish on oil, you're basically saying that uh, United States oil production is not necessarily increasing like many people say, like it's at all time peak, which it is, but um, the story is slightly different. If you were to use like a framing effect, you could also say that the United States unofficially curtailed uh, that United States unofficially curtailed oil production growth for the past uh, 12 months, producing around 13.2 million barrels a day. And it, this this type of statement invoked a lot of discussion. But one, it, what I wanted to talk about is just the simple fact of this truth is that, as you can see here in this chart, uh, the United States oil production, essentially, it's been somewhat flat here, right? So it's been uh, somewhat flat around that uh that level, which is about 13.2 million barrels a day. And if we think about kind of what took place here and why this happened is if we look kind of um, at the different charts and the different time frames. by the way, this is from EIA, right? So US Energy Information Administration. And if we kind of zoom in at different time frames and do more of a better kind of understanding of the different periods, we can see that current production basically in the blue line is from um, so June 2023 to uh, June 2024. And this is about 13,200 uh, uh, 13, on that scale in thousands of barrels per day, which is 13.2 million barrels a day. So you can see this line essentially did not change uh, very much for the past uh, uh, year, right? So from the official data. And so the current production is 13.2 million barrels per day. Now, a lot of the conversation is about that United States cannot uh, stop increasing production rates. And this chart essentially tells you is that we've been essentially plateaued at this level for some time now. So if one is using a framing effect, you could say that without announcing curtailment, United States essentially plateaued at 13.2 million barrels per day for some time now. And this number did not really change that much. Now, if we look a little bit more into the dynamics of what I'm talking about here, when it comes to US field production rates of crude oil, you can also see some stories here that developed from, let's say the COVID timeframe. So if we look at this uh, chart here, um, the time frame that's really important to kind of capture will be uh, 2019 to 2020. And I really want to talk about this because obviously early 2020, so February, March, April, it was very challenging around this time frame where production essentially collapsing here due to COVID, right? And th this is kind of the, the time frame we're talking about early 2020 kind of and in progressing into um, 20, uh, the late part of 2020 and uh, the beginning of 2021, which is kind of that uh, wave one and wave two, which is the yellow line here. And so you can see kind of that production that's been uh, at reduced rates for some time. But what I want to focus about this is that is that COVID timeframe, right? And because it provides us a little bit of a uh, time frame to compare the blue line to pre-COVID production. And so this is the one I, I was talking about where production collapsing. But if we analyze the previous data point, which is right here, so we see production at peak prior to COVID was about 13, 13.1. And you can see that that the blue line basically kind of merging with, with the pink line. And we can see... Uh, the same oil production rate that we've been seeing historically, right? So I think the context is here is very important. Now, the question 
and what happened in the other periods uh, between uh, 2022 towards 2023 is essentially COVID recovery. And that's kind of the those greenish looking charts that we can see here, where you can see kind of increase in production during those time frames, just to get to basically the blue line, which is what we've been seeing in the recent past. And so I, I think it's really important to, to kind of understand that, yeah, sure, we uh, recovered, so we uh, were increasing production from COVID lows, but now we're kind of plateauing at 13.2 million barrels per day level, which is what this blue line is saying. Now, a couple of dynamics here that have been taking place and why I think this value not necessarily going to increase significantly, even though increase is possible because, um, you know, there is optimization in technologies and things like that when it comes to fracking, when it comes to uh, different relationships between wells, for example, parent and child well optimization, and, and the more efficient companies get. I think one of the challenges, though, that works from the other perspective is the fact that we've seen a very high volatility. As I speak uh, right now, so September 15th, uh, oil basically in the last couple of weeks declined significantly to about $66 uh, dollars per barrel in WTI and, and recently recovered in the last couple of days to about 69. And it could fluctuate here. The problem is, is that we're currently having a budget season. So, uh, and, and the company is deciding basically where are they going to go from here, right? W what kind of uh, expenditures they're going to be having. And we have a couple of things here that kind of, uh, it's really important, I think, to consider. Uh, the first thing is, you know, we have budget season. So the budget season is uh, is happening right now. And as they decide how much money to spend, the question is, you know, at currently at 69 uh, WTI, would companies essentially get aggressive when it comes to growth and expanding the cap kind of capital programs? And because of the PTSD that we saw in uh, sharp declines during COVID and uh, companies really struggling with their stock price, one could argue that maybe management teams will be a little bit more conservative. The other angle here that I think it's really important to talk about is commitment of companies for uh, buybacks, especially in uh, in Canada, right? So, uh, you know, the challenge uh, these companies are having right now is a lot of the money is flowing into kind of um, uh, S&P tech, all that kind of stuff. And, and now with maybe correction, people thinking maybe, you know, there's another kind of opportunity here, some money is flowing into real estate. And so companies competing uh, over over that investment, um, and and uh, one of the ways to attract investment is via buy buyback. So they make those commitments. Now, if you uh, even low cost of supply and you basically not putting money back into your your business, you probably kind of thinking here. Okay, well, to do the buybacks, I need to kind of. Uh, um, allocate more more capital towards kind of that marginal uh, benefit, right? And so companies could get a little bit more um, conservative when it comes to spend. The other thing is dividends, right? So companies paying dividends to attract uh, investors. And again, this is another commitment. If you take adjustment funds low minus uh, the capital expenditure, the, the difference now, the margin of what you collect in the free cash flow is a little bit lower now than versus what we had when it was like 80 WTI. And so companies could uh, could struggle, you know, not only kind of buying back shares maybe, but also uh, paying dividend and allocating more capital towards growth. And so based on those, uh, uh, you know, couple of uh, angles, I think it's important to consider why this, this trend not necessarily going to increase significantly. The other angle here is also, of course, we talked about buybacks. We talked about um, uh, you know budget capital allocation. We talked about dividends. I think it's also important to talk about debt. So many companies meeting their kind of debt targets here and and doing quite well when it comes to balance sheets. But at the same time, um, they do have debt on the books. And they need to pay interest on the debt. And again, if you're looking at adjusted funds flow and um, the capital expenditure program for for the year, and and 
that the delta between that's left, which is a free cash, how do you basically buy back shares, pay down debt, uh, you know, pay interest, um, uh, pay the dividend for some whoever is applicable, but also allocate more money towards basically uh, drilling more and, and it becoming a challenge, right? So, and, and many of those companies, as you look at kind of the COVID crash. Uh, angle here and and again there there could be various reasons to why um oil demand could be declining like uh, you know maybe we have uh, kind of recessionary fears and stuff like this but maybe if we even see kind of demand declining companies are thinking okay well maybe i'm sustaining production maybe slightly increasing but definitely there's not amazing reason here to grow production significantly at least in the united states uh, the other thing that could be hurting here be because of uh, uh, the oil price that currently is 69 um, is um, the angle of basically investing in in uh, research and development, uh, new technologies initiatives, because now you basically have less less money to work with because of lo lower oil prices that we've been seeing. And again, th th this dollar is kind of competing with buying back shares and paying down debt and um, paying dividend and maybe drilling more wells. And so companies have to kind of be smart on how they allocate money. And that's another point to why oil production may not increase. Now, again, the, the true value here is really to uh, avoid biases and kind of the various framing effects, just like uh, I described here, where if one could uh, describe something in a negative way, they could say, well, oil production is basically oil time high. But one could say, well, oil production just came back to pre-COVID levels, and now it's basically plateaued. So, plateaued. so one could say it that way. So I think it's really important to kind of be mindful of that. I'm not necessarily promoting here, you know, to be like super bullish or bearish on, on prices, but I think it's kind of important to be a little bit neutral when it comes to emotions and how we frame those things and, and kind of provide the kind of proper way to to the actual data that we're seeing. And so that's why I think it's it's important to consider that when you have uh, uh, analysts talking on uh, on uh, various networks and they're talking about basically that the United States taking significant market share from the Saudis that curtailing production, well, there's a lot of evidence here that the United States unintentionally also somewhat curtailing uh, production. So this is just something to consider for the viewers. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Thanks.